The following is an RC Racing TV special exclusive and contains actual autopsy footage which may contain material which some viewers may find objectionable. Viewer discretion is advised. Until now, race winning RC cars took their secrets with them to the grave. But today, the RC pathologist has the tools and understanding to dissect winning vehicles from the past, allowing them to reveal their secrets with amazing accuracy. Now you can enter this world, a world both fascinating and forbidden. This is the world of RC Autopsy. Tonight on The Slab is... Lee Martin's European Championship winning Tamiya 201X. Right. What is under the sheet today? All I can say is I can see orange underneath there. Oh yeah. And a bit of blue. Hmm. I might know what this is. Okay. Ooh, I do know what this is. This looks cool. Too look right at, it look does. Look at that body shell. Look at all these stickers, Lee. Wow. That's gonna, well, we've got 20 minutes just discussing stickers. Firstly, uh, who, who do you think this <laughs> Well, I'm pretty to? sure this is mine. Oh, okay, fantastic. Yeah. Do you think you could tell us a bit about it today? I'm sure I can. Mm. So this, this is a Tamiya 201 okay. X. Um, 2012 European Championship winning car. Two wheel drive. Here it is. I mean, yeah. I think you should ask me questions. I am going to ask you questions. So, firstly, we have a massive body. It, it looked really big, this body shell, compared <laughs> to what we're used to seeing. It looks cool. Like, you've got like, this big, kind of, I don't know, this big arrowy type looking body shell, I guess, for, for fastness, if that's a word. Yeah. Mm. I think you can see it doesn't actually fit. Properly. Oh, so is this off another car? Yeah, so this is a B4 I see, yes, you've got to one. I see. Yeah, B4 one. Mm. It's a Proline Bulldog, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um, you can see like there's cut lines up here. Yep. Um, so yeah, it wasn't wasn't yeah. meant for this car, but you know, not many people made yeah. bodies for the Tamiya. Because that car looks like it's off an eight scale, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's got a bigger. massive window on it's there. It's the size of the window. But got, it's like family it's like car It's like drifting, sized. you can see everything. Mm. No, that's fantastic. So where did you race this? Again, so this towing. was Fairing, Austria, yep. uh, 2012. Mm. Um, dirt. Yep. Um, yeah. And what was the track like? Yeah, I mean, it was an eight-scale track. Mm -hmm. So maybe the, the the cab was the reason it won. Yep. Um, it, it was tough, um, but ultimately it worked really well. So. Yeah. This is a car that you've been running for a while at the time, or you, you're you quite so, new to so the car? This, this was actually the free peat. This was the third European Championship on, on a bounce mm -hmm. with two-wheel drive. So this was yep. the, the, the third in the, the trio there. Um, so yeah, it was a pretty much the same car for the, the past three years. Okay, and I take it you changed tiny bits. Was it more just a setup? Like you could have run the car from three years oh, before. Oh, well, we're going to find out. Okay, that's really interesting. So before we take the body shell off, these stickers that you've got in here. So you've got Rubits, our Rubits, friend Tony. Yeah, our friend Tone yep. made, made obviously a lot of brass back in the day. That's so I'm right. sure there's going to be some brass in there. Mm. Then you've got RC Domination. Yeah, you remember them? Yeah, I seem yeah, to remember the, that. The late. Dave Church, mm. his his hobby shop, um, gave me some support, helped me on my yep. on my way. Then, then you got much more. Much more. They would have. Um, what would they have been then? So they've had a number Just, of different. It would have been charges and stuff then. Mm -hmm. It was kind of before they went into the electronics world, I, see. I think. I think they, they were just on the start of it, but they sponsored me back then yep. for charges and accessories. And they were the coolest stuff in, mm. in back in the day. Yeah, then you've got speed power on the side there. Speed power, obviously the... You can see the bigger sticker here from Speed Passion, Speed Power with the batteries of okay. Speed Passion. Yep. So it's pretty much the same sponsor. Yep. Then you've got your friend, Tony. Mr. 33. Mr. Th no, well, no, obviously Mark. Mark it's Mark's yes, line, so I was thinking about... More, like, more Tony. Tony. We know Sport. the brains is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Tony Sport is obviously the main distributor of yeah. that, isn't so, it? Yeah, good, good friend of Reinhard, yeah. so that was on there. And then you've got H there. Is that yeah. for highest? Or high tech. High tech. Yeah, I'm guessing there'll be a high tech servo when I take the body off. Okay. So... Uh, yeah, I should see. should have been. Yeah, and then you've got obviously Racer there, which is the magazine. The magazine. We all supported the, yeah. the magazine back in the day to. Uh, and then yeah. you've got Avid on here, which are kind of Avid. shiny bit line. Yeah, they made accessories. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure what I used that was Avid, but um, find out. yeah, the stickers on there. Yeah. So if we take this yeah, off, you forgot a couple here. Yeah. I'm very sorry. So you've got some. Is that AC? So it's DCD. DCD. Sorry, that was, that was Dirt Champ Designs. Okay. Um, it was a company that made a personal lap timer. Back oh, in the day. okay. So I'd use their lap timer and. That sounded for testing. Testing. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously LMR. Yep. Me. Yep. Yeah. Sydney Martin Racing, 
And then you got AKA, which is a well, tire, tire sponsor, obviously yeah. mostly for eighth scale at the time, yeah. but they would support me in 10th yeah. if I needed them. But we always run controlled tires. So. And of course, you've got the TRF, which is the kind of racing line of Tamiya cars. Racing Factory. Yeah. So and this, this is the Tamiya. Cool. So. Anything on the wings? Any, anywhere else on the car? That's no, we, we, we're at that stage now where we're just running clear on the wing and not really mm -hmm. putting any stickers on. Yeah. yeah. So you happy to take the shut off? Yeah, watch so these. Got, yeah, we've got the little clips at the back. Over. That kind of went away over the years, didn't it? That started it holding on. So that's body shell. So you've coated it on the inside here, obviously keep the paint yeah, on there. Goo, yeah, keep yeah. it nice and fresh. Probably and only did one race anyway. Yeah. If it wouldn't have won, it would have done way more. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that. You've got a lipo in there still, Lee. There's a lipo yeah. in it. Please don't be reckless. I'm surprised it's not plugged in, honestly. <laughs> so instant bit is there's a lot of blue in there. Yep. Well, Tamiya is blue. Mm -hmm. You've got that, you've got the Speed Passion, even the battery's got the blue in there. Obviously, you've got the lovely, lovely blue thumb nuts on there. Some yep. other things on. Still got the PT in there. I've noticed on like, other cars that you know, I've looked at over the years of, that have been sitting on a shelf that the PT's gone. You know. Yeah, no, so with my, my big winners, uh, I don't remove anything. Yeah. It's all as it came off the track. Maybe I've stuck a new set of tyres on. More if it, if it, say, if I won the first two legs mm -hmm. and I didn't run leg three. And I'd use leg freeze tyres. Okay. Um, so it make, smart. It, make it look smart. I don't know mm. about these ones. Um, have they got a tyre mark in them anywhere? They might have just been practice tyres that got mm. put on for pictures. Yeah. Because they've got no marking. So. I see. So you're obviously glancing at this. You've got a bit of Lex underneath this wing just to uh, take out play. Is that? Yeah. You know, back in the day, we didn't have screwing wings. Mm -hmm. So if you had a body clip like it is here, Sometimes the wing would, would flop around, so you could put a bit of Lex and double it up to, to make it really stiff so you got as much aero as you could. Mm. Tighter. Obviously, looking at the car, so you've got the battery in there. I want to take the battery out and see if it's fallen over time. That's yeah, one yeah, bit yeah, that yeah, I, I find interesting. So, one thing you'll notice about the, the battery strap. You've though, got a nice reboot, it's fun. Well, that, but there's something else. I'm not sure. It doesn't tuck into the back doesn't here. Doesn't tuck into the is back. Is it because the battery is too big, or is it to change flex? No, no, no. Okay. I'm honestly not sure. Any. There is a good reason. Okay. You'll see that the chassis itself has been. Oh, it's lengthened. a longer car. So this was on that trend because I remember yeah. Paul Worsley did a load for the AE guys. And he done time. this. I see. So a Paul Worsley chassis. And you didn't have a strap that was the right Didn't have a to... strap long enough, so I basically see. you'd take two chassis, oh. cut them so that it was five mil longer than a standard mm -hmm. one, put them back together, um, screw it in with some, some bits. And I That's think it cool. Was probably, I didn't even spot that. It was glued that, like... at the same time, yeah. Yeah. It's obviously a nice I thought it might have been in this car, but I uh, wasn't sure. I see. And then we've got our battery here, so our speed pressure that's 5,300. Look at that beast. Slightly swollen. But it's there. We did a great job for you. Yeah. Obviously, you got our, you get stickers on your batteries that you want to put through tech, your motor, your the wing. chassis, the wing. The wing's uh, got one on. The yeah. So when side. you do a Euros or well, basically these major events, they make sure that you're not running illegal batteries, ones that aren't on the list and stuff like that. Yeah. And I mean, they didn't even want to make it flat on the bottom. It's got little little feet. Mm, well, that worked out quite nicely considering yeah, over the considering time. Considering the swelling. Sp expanded. <laughs> um, so yeah, so obviously we've got some bits of foam here to push the battery back. Obviously we used to, that was a tiny bit of balance you could play with on yep. with the battery, isn't that? And obviously lots of, lots of nice blue bits everywhere. Nice. I, I love the blue. Still a there? little foam here, but I think that's more just to have a cushion mm. rather than just spacing it forward. Yeah. So. When you did that event, did you change much on the cars or, or the car? I don't think so. I mean, mm. we're talking talking a while ago now. Mm. Most of the um, the work had been done in the, in the warm up beforehand. Mm -hmm. I um, see. So you kind of got on with it, tire prep, get out there. Done. Not not too much tire prep because no sourcing. Yeah. Um, one thing I noticed, you've got like some heat shrink over the top of this. Do you have issues with it coming off? No, yourself? I think it's just to make it look prettier. Me. Oh, okay. Yeah, Fair I, I don't yeah. actually know why, to be honest. Mm. Um, yeah, I can't remember. I guess it's to make it look nice. It would have been nice when it was all black, but now it's taken yeah, it's a grey kind of, turn. It has. So, what motor's in here? Well, it's, it's a Speed a, Passion. Yeah, 7.5 it's 7 in here. 7.5, look, it's easy. We don't even... Yeah. And these are the ones with the cool terminals, which, obviously, you can plug unplug in. and then plug back in. Obviously, now it will kind of completely desolder itself because I've yeah. messed around with it. I mean, it, um, was, it was such a cool feature back mm. in when it came out. It was just like, you just have to keep an eye on it. 
because they would loosen off. So I, before every run, I would just yeah. check it with my fingers, and if it was loose, I'd just pinch it with a set of pliers mm. and push it back on. I see. Um, One thing I've noticed, you've got quite shiny wishbones on this car. Yes, very shiny wishbones. They were shiny anyway, but both shocks have leaked. All four. <laughs> <laughs> so wash your hands after. Yeah, after pretty much. Um, yeah, it sits in a bag uh, somewhere nice. Mm. Um, and so looking at the front, we've got a nice brass part, a brass bulkhead. Yeah, that would have been a rude bits part. Yeah. And then there's a rude bits weight here. I see, but it's all stealth and. And there's some black, black. weights, a couple up on top and I a couple see. down so just, inside. Okay, you get over that nose. So yeah, there's a bit of weight up on the front. Mm. So you've got some cool stickers here to let you know how many times you've. Like gone over bumps? How many times I crashed? Oh, okay. That's 500 <laughs> for that race. Um, no, so yeah, just to tell me what shock all, so we mm -hmm. could actually rebuild it up to yep. spec. Yeah, 500 rear, 550 front. And do you remember this. what pistons you ran on it? Oh, small bore shocks. Yeah. I want to say it was like 1313. Mm -hmm. like two holes. Something like that, two holes. Yeah. yeah, I can't massively remember, no. I'm not going to lie. So is this <laughs> pin or hex drive? Well, we're going to find out. Yeah, should we get a wheel off? We need a 7 mil. Yep. Right, let me take this one off so we can see. Because what year was this car again? So 2012. 2012. So it's, I can imagine it's... Because I started working here and we're still pin driving our cars I think it's going to be pinned because... Well, it's not a Tamiya wheel, I don't think. Is that a JC wheel? It's a pin. Nice. I bet you've got two, two little two groups hex. there. I think it, it could possibly be... An associated wheel. Okay. Um, Moulded inserts in there. Mm, yeah, you can see that. And that's yeah. we didn't normally run them on the whole shots. No, um, and back in 2012, the insert was open, okay. whereas now it's a controlled insert. Yeah. It was open then. So and I guess you did your testing beforehand, found that, that was good testing, you. found the best yeah. one. What are we got in the front? I'm just going to say, before we take that wheel, look at that hub carrier. <whistles> that's cool. You've got a screw on top plate there. Yep. That's very cool. Fancy, huh? It, and just that quantity of blue is very nice. And Tamiya have a certain blue as well, don't they? That's yeah, Tamiya the blue, isn't it? Yeah. It's, just, it's always beautiful. And mm. and the best thing was the Speed Passion blue was the same. Yeah, but that's, I just love that. Like when that came off, it just pops. Got a little fan in mm. there. And like how you put heat shrink around your capacitor there as well. Yeah, got to try and make so it look So you've got a pretty. single capacitor as well instead of the bank of four that you'd normally have at the yeah, Speedo? Yeah, a single big one. That was kind of standard back then. Okay, okay. Um, I'm, I'm, if I remember right, it was. Mm, no, no. Um, so let's take this this front wheel off as well, shall we? Yeah. Should be a two mil. It is. Again, it's it's it's, it's not a nut on the front. We've got bearings in the wheel, mm -hmm. screw. But unlike the American cars, it ran a metric bearing, that's so you right. had to have a different front wheel. And a metric screw that's very and easy a metric to replace screw, if you use yeah, it. and it was only a, a two mil head rather than the one sixteenth tiny thing yes. you could strip. Yes. Um, so it was was nicer. But pretty you know, this car was based on a B four, there's no no way about that. That's it. The thing is that, that was a very good car at the time. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. And to be honest, there'll be those little tweaks that you're doing on the car to try and go and beat your competitors, what? which one of them would have been, you know, Neil Cragg back then as well as the European races. Exactly. There's Tweaks here. I obviously haven't put any screws back here. I see. Um, so Is that a big change for you when you took it out? Yeah. 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 I think we can kind of twist the car. Yeah. We can see that it flexes in the rear. Probably mm. flexes more around this point, to be honest. Yeah. Um, it probably flexes more where we've cut the chassis in half. Yeah. And, and did you have much um, like plastic option when you ran with Tamiya? Do they have graphite? Yeah. Plastic so there was always a lot of range of of material stiffness. Yeah. I wouldn't say it was graphite, but they'd obviously mix some in. But yeah, you, they, they had the hards and mediums. Always had a soft, medium, yeah. hard. Yeah. And same when anything soft was nice mm. and bendy, would never break. But yeah, because the front wishbones, even though they got some oil on, they look quite dark and look more like like a softer plastic. Normally come with yeah. that darker colour. Although the Tamiya plastic was always quite dark. Yeah. Even when it was hard, it was quite a dark I plastic. I see. That's and cool. it, it was always super easy to clean. Like it had like a Almost surface like a, on it that was just slippery. Like, yeah, like yeah. a slippery surface. Okay. It's got even more of a slippery surface now. Yeah, you can see how bendy that is when you touched it. Yeah, I mean, these front arms are... It all looks brand, brand new, huh? It looks very pristine. I can imagine you went to the meeting with a very fresh car anyway. Well, it, would have been, it would have been new, yeah. Mm. I mean, we can get the the motor plate off. Yeah. Obviously, we're this. not running the brush before, so... Uh, like, like, obviously, like we looked on the other ones, so we're on the brushless. And brushless have been out for a bit of time, because I think before this, did you run Novak before that? 
Um, yes, it would have been. Yeah, yeah. Novak. So you went from the orange stuff, which matched the body shell, to blue stuff that matched the car. Yeah, and when I went to Speed Passion, it was a relative unknown. Yeah. And they actually didn't have blue back then. It okay. was carbon and purple. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, and then I think they had a silver one too, mm. and then eventually. Blue and they came. had a more conventional looking motor at the time as well. Their V2, because this was the V3, where yes. you had the tabs on. Remember, they were quite wild, and on some of the hotter wines, they had little fans built into them as well, didn't they? Little yeah, plate yeah. On it, really. So it howled a bit when it went. It did, you're right. I had, I had my own edition one, a Lee yeah. Martin edition. Nice. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty cool. I've still got some of the stickers at home somewhere. Oh. So obviously you've got a fan blowing on the speed controller. Did you have, an, uh, did you really need that on there? Um, um, could you run it without, or do you just didn't even risk it? I see you've moved it, I guess, because of the body shell. Yeah, I think because the body was quite low, mm -hmm. uh, I think it... It's just a, a problem avoidance thing. Mm, but it looks cool though, the way that you've, you know, it's a bit more like a, the modern cars that we have now, you can yeah. sit things away. I mean, you wouldn't even know it was there, right? No, no, not at all. So I never, I need the two mil back. Now I can tell there's no pinion on this. So when I said I left them as they were, apart from the pinion, because- Do you think that was from when they took it apart? Yeah, honestly, by the time they took it apart and gave me it back, I'd already had a couple of beers. Mm. So, um, so, Put an opinion back on a mesh and so it wasn't high on it's my It's lucky just to be there as it is. And I'll, I'll tell you something now. I never put the motors back together because I'd already started having a beer or mm. two. And people, I think you were celebrating quite people, rightly. Yeah, celebrating yeah. and people congratulating you and they would always bring you beers. Mm. Um, so I'd always give it to someone like Cockers to put back okay. together. Oh, Tom, here's, here's a cup of motor bits. Please mm. put that back together for me. So um, yeah, by that point, I just I didn't care as long as it was back in the car mm. somewhat. So yeah, no opinion on there. So How cool does cool. that look though? That's the nice little grooves going on there. Even the motor plate's got the little recesses there, I guess trying to save some weight. Yeah, the original one was quite thick and then they milled a special one out and then the gear cover like fits mm. perfectly on there. Um, lots of blue. Yeah, lots and lots of blue. So the slipper plate's a bit darker on these. Are these like, yeah. uh, that's how they came on the Tamis? Yeah, it's, a, it's an option, hard okay. anodized version, mm -hmm. like really hard anodized. Yeah, so but, but what about color. the pad underneath though? Because that's like grey. Yeah, it's very grey, isn't it? Mm. That was how they were. Mm. Um, they obviously work good, otherwise I wouldn't have used it. So mm. yeah, it's pretty cool. And an LMR Electra wing. Oh, I see. Was that the first wing that you did? It was the first wing that I did. Yeah, a bit of shock hole leakage. Yeah. You see the track marks are still in there. Mm. So it's nice when you can see those details. Yeah. I mean, we can open up a shock, but there's not going to be much oil in it. Why is that? Because it's all over the wishbone. That's very true. <laughs> That's very true. We don't have to worry about that then. <laughs> you want to open it? I don't mind. Well, you remember what's inside it though, don't you? Well, you, you, you even know what oil was inside it. Yeah, I know what oil well, was inside it. Yeah. I, know what I could get some pots from over there. The oil's not far away. You could refit it for you. Just to leak out again. Yeah, all right. Awesome. All these vintage cars we look at and a modernish one leaks. Mm. I get the wing off so you can get to that. Are you going to bend the uh, wing down? I reckon we should be able to just get it anyway. You're going to upset some people watching. Well, it's my just car, so never mind. That's true. <laughs> you have permission from the owner. Yeah. So you've got cool little um, hard undized shock standoffs there. Yep. Yeah, option is that, that. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, and we're a bit a bit more traditional, the fact we have a bleed screw. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to let you take it apart. Yeah, I'll get, I was going to say, I'll get some tissue just in case, <laughs> but there won't be any oil, just at the bottom. So we'll give that little wipe off, hope you don't mind. No, no, you're good. So far, I've been lucky in the oil. So we've got traditional looking spring cup. The one thing that I loved when I used to see all the Tamiya cars was the white springs. Yeah, cool. Uh, there, there was, like, no one else was doing that as far as... It should have another colour on it here. Oh, it's blue. So it's uh, a white spring where they all were and it's a blue I see spring we've got about oil to there basically okay. that that's air there so you know good got a bottom cartridge look. yeah I was gonna say so it's got that like that low C style mm. one there which makes that so it wasn't assembly itself you put all the o-rigs in a yeah. clip yeah and then obviously then you've got the top that you can then undo and then we can have a little look at the piston in there I'm guessing is it a white piston I would imagine so yeah so pushing this up, obviously you can see the, the lack of oil in there. So i just show you on camera. That's how I ran it. Yeah. And obviously push the piston through and we should be able to see, so let the oil drop back down. Some writing on there, is there? There's a smudge of something. I think I coloured it in where, mm. the, where the writing is so it's easier to read. Yeah. 
Oh, nice. And then obviously Eclipse holding things together, whereas today we've moved Old more to the, to the screw. I feel like I don't need to bleed this. No, I don't so need to do, mate. I'm just going to put that back on for you. Poor thing. But it's nice. Nice little unit. Can't even really test the, the suspension activity because it'd <laughs> be like the original time you were hot shot. <laughs> I, I reckon uh, she won't be as good on the jumps anymore. No. Hey. Screw to the inside. That's there right. you go. That's right. I, I've got the same way. I'd obviously crashed at some point because the front screw's got a bit of dirt in there. But it did win the first two legs, I think. Did you crash on the, like, you know, once you finish the race and then crashed off the track out of excitement? I don't know. I'm pretty sure I won the first two legs. Anyway, there's a video. So. But it's all been about this one man. Lee Martin got the, got, got the job done in leg one and he's now out by himself in this third leg of the A-Final. Let's forget about the second leg. It wasn't great for him, but defending champion, two-wheel drive electric buggy, driving his orange and white car. They come across the three fingers in the middle of the track, under the bridge for the last time, going round the paved section of track, back across the top of the bridge. Lee Martin out in plenty of clear air. The British driver gonna come round here, clear the triple jumps, and Lee Martin is gonna win for the third time in the row the European Championship. Lee Martin, two-wheel drive European champion, 2012. And look at how relieved he looks after that second A final. You can see the relief on his face there. Lee defends his European title successfully once again. He did it in France and now he's done it in Austria. So you didn't win this car afterwards. Did the cars change after that quite quickly? So when did we yeah. go to mid-motor? I mean, 2013 Formators. was a mid like I mean, already 2012, people were running mid-motor cars. Mm -hmm. um, we were... When? Yeah, so 2012, I was running a Vega. Okay. Conversion. I remember that one. Yeah, so already on AstroTurf and stuff, I was running a mid-motor car. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, this, this this was one of the only times in the year I'd pull out the, the original just to do a Euros mm -hmm. because we all still weren't convinced that um, mid-motor was the way to go. Yeah, and, and to be honest, a lot of development has happened over the years to get them working as well as they do. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, this came out once that year, and then the next year... Um, was a world championship in Chico, oh. and where I used the the prototype mid motor from Tamiya nice. and finished second. But we'll do another video on that um, soon. So with Chico, so it's super high bites. Yes, that was there. So um, I'm guessing that'll be a good story to tell about. But it will. That's one that I I wasn't able to go to back then. I wasn't doing this role, and um, but it sounds like a, a race that was interesting. That was cool. So, it was cool. It was like the change of everything. It was when everyone else in the industry realised they needed to work on mid motor cars. Mm. Light bulb. So yeah, anything else on this bad boy here? I can't really think of anything. It's just nice to see it, if I'm honest. Um, Such a pretty car. I feel like mm. we, we lose a bit of identity these days with everything yeah. just being black. Yeah, so much similarity between yeah. the cars. I think we, uh, we need to invite a bit of colour back into it. Oh, I, I would definitely love to do that. Yeah. Maybe Tamiya Blue would be a good colour. Tamiya Blue would be so they mind, an awesome right? colour. <laughs> it works for Schumacher. Mm, should we get that yeah. battery in there? Oh yeah. Yep. Forgot about that bit. Yeah. I wonder if we plugged it in if it would actually work. I feel like you shouldn't plug it in. I'll stand over there. <laughs> <laughs> Another cool thing is how they put a little clip here mm -hmm. to just grab your servo oh, wire. Yeah, I didn't spot that from my house looking before. Yeah, just to, just to hold it in place, mm. just like, a, you know, something that's normally forgotten, stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of pointless, like it's, it's only holding it there, it's not like it's keeping it away it's from electronics. It's a nicety though, isn't it? It is a nicety. Fantastic. So there you go, there is my Tamiya 201X Free Pete car. Well, thank you for, uh, for bringing it along, it's fantastic to... Strokes still feel pretty good, you know? Yeah. Right. Awesome. Cool. There you go. That's it. Thank you for watching. See you next time. That's it for this video. But don't forget to subscribe and check out the rest of our RC Racing video series. And don't forget, be an RC TV hero. Make sure to hit that join button and find out all the details about being an RC TV hero.